If you find a sick bird when you are out looking for a new parrot, should you get that bird? Great question, great topic that someone brought up for me to talk to you about. Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Blues Bond. If you haven't gotten your copy on Amazon, please do. It is your handbook to providing a quality life for your parrot so that you can have quantities of bliss. Plus, it helps me support my parrots. This is how my parrots support themselves. Today in this video, I've got Binks because I'm hoping that he's going to help me uh, show you what to look for in a sick bird. Part of the problem is unless you get a young bird who could still be sick, um, you know, a lot of adult birds, if a parrot store rehomes birds that way, I'm not sure that they're gonna tell you that the parrot is sick. Someone uh, wrote, they also got a golden conure like Binks, knowing that it was sick. And, and um, this person was saying, you know, I think you should do a video on it because you know, maybe a neophyte should really know what they're getting into if they get a bird like that. And I agree, getting a bird that is going to have special needs of any kind, whether they're emotional and psychological or whether they're physical, it, it does require more than you might guess. I mean, to some extent, I think that if you don't have experience with a parrot that's been sick, you don't know what to look for. One of the biggest problems with parrots is that when they are sick, they really hide their illness so that they are going to kind of look normal. And so knowing that they're sick or knowing how bad it is, um, knowing how severe it is, that's kind of tricky. And to be frank, um, I think that even when you know what to look for, it doesn't mean you know what's wrong and there's no guarantees. Once a parent's showing signs that they're sick, they're usually pretty darn sick. And at that point, by the time they get to the vet, it might be too late. That certainly can happen. And unfortunately, it has happened to me. I've gotten, you know, obviously better at recognizing signs and that kind of thing. But it is this whole big process. So if you are getting especially a big bird, most places, because let me translate, if you're getting an expensive parrot, most um, exotic bird stores are going to let you take the bird to an avian vet uh, for a checkup, and if there's any problems, they're gonna let you bring the bird back You know, within the first X number of days. Sometimes it's like 48 hours, sometimes it's 72 hours, you know. It obviously depends, each bird gets, and each bird, each store gets to set their own standards. So. Um, if your parrot, if you get a parrot that's sick, whether you know it or not, what do we want to look for? And what should you expect? What we want to look for is if you want to get a parrot and you don't want your parrot to be sick, look at the feathers. Binx's feathers are wicked awesome. They're beautiful. Um, there's no stress bars and I therefore can't show you what a stress bar is. But a stress bar would literally be lines in the um, feathers and in those lines if you think of a feather as sort of being a lot of pollen like on a butterfly even though it's not there will be lines of pollen missing again it's not that it's pollen it's that i think that kind of paints a good picture of it where the feather just has lines of feather that are missing so does that mean like the feather is naked no it means that within the feather there's just these little, you know, there's a row of color missing. So it'll look black or it'll look a little absent, like there is no, no nothing there. And that's a, a sign that there's been probably some illness. It could be due to stress and it could also be due to something physical. So something good to watch out for. Um, have I had parrots have stress bars? Yes, I have. Um, so what else do we want to look for? You want to look... Just like you and I, when you and I are sick, our nose has boogers coming out of it, our eyes might be droopy, our mouth might have stuff coming out of it, and a parrot's vent, there, the area where everything comes out, um, you saw on base, it's, it's feathers, it's clean, it's just clean. If, if you kind of imagine if you and I had feathers on our hindquarters, and we went to the bathroom and we didn't wipe, we would 
problem we have. Like, our feathers would be a mess, right? It would be poopy, probably amongst other things. Hi, Zeus. Um, so Binx's, I'm gonna show you again, his is just feathers. You almost can't even see where the vent is. So that is a really good sign that there's no issue. I mean, you really, you can't see the vent that's right there. All clean feathers, all clean nose, all clean eyes. Thanks for letting me move you around. You're such a good boy. So those are some really sort of easy signs that you might be able to see with your eyes, or you can literally ask the shop owner to show you. You know, that I think that'd be a little uncomfortable, but if you have any doubts, even if you don't have doubts, whether you're getting a young parrot or an older parrot, um, you know, I think that would be a really smart thing. You know, you ask the shop, uh, what's your return policy if I take my bird to the vet right away? And um, can you hold the bird up for me to look at the feathers, the wings? Can you open the wings up? Um, do you know if this bird can fly or can't fly? Uh, can you, you know, show me the vent? I want to see if it's clean. You know, I, Can you go over some signs with me to show me the, the you know, signs that the parrot's healthy? And um, I can't imagine that they wouldn't do that for you. Now, I added the wings, opening up the wings, because some parrots can't fly for whatever reason. And I don't know that that's a reason not to get a parrot. It's not a reason not to get a parrot for me, depending on what you want, depending on your lifestyle, depending on you know what you're looking for in a companion parrot who's gonna eat your necklace. But um, hey you, can I have my necklace back? But it's, I think it's good to know. I think that when you're purchasing a parrot, you should know these things. What do you do if you don't have a avian vet around you and what should you expect if you choose to purchase a sick bird? Um, we are so fortunate because we have, I have like three avian vets that I can make an appointment with. They're all within like 20 minutes and I can take my parrot. Yes, I'm very grateful. There are people who don't have an avian vet in state, in their state, so um, very grateful. Nevertheless, it's still expensive. Generally speaking, what you should expect is taking the parrot, just walking in the door is gonna be around $70. Some um, vets will charge you less for a smaller bird, more for a larger bird, but in that neighborhood. So it might be like 60, it might be 90, it just sort of depends. A lot of vets will start with a gram stain, and that is when they take a poop sample and they run a gram stain on it and they're looking for certain bacteria. They cannot look for every bacteria out there. So even when they do this test, it doesn't mean that they're not gonna catch something. It doesn't mean they're like not good at what they do. It just means that uh, avian vets are gonna test for the standard things, kind of like the usual suspects, if you will. Can you take your parrot to a regular vet. Most regular vets, I don't think they'll even see a parrot. Why? Because um, it's, not, it's not because a parrot has feathers and flies. It's because that I know of a parrot's circ or, um, respiratory system completely different than a mammal's, just completely different. We have two lungs. They have, I don't know how many, they've got like air sacs all over. It's just a different creature altogether. I'm not sure if their heart's different, their diet's different, all the diseases they can get is different. So it's kind of like asking someone who speaks Italian to please talk to someone who speaks Russian. They're like, you know, I can translate from English to, to Italian, but I just told you I don't speak Russian. It, it's just, it is like a different language. I think that if um, a vet was super desperate, they could probably look and see some things, but you know, it just, you have to understand it's, it's not really their language kind of thing. That's not what they've studied. That's not what they know. So, so if you've gone in, walking in the door costs you around $70. The gram stain is going to be, I don't know, something around $30. And then the vet, just from that, is going to tell you, oh, there's like clostridium, which is a common yeast infection. I think it's yeast. That's clostridium is how I've heard of it in cocktails you know, or it's something else, here's the antibiotic. The antibiotic's gonna cost you, depending, you know, it's gonna be 20, 30 to, to $90. It depends, of course, on 
um, the infection and how many days, that kind of thing. Then you're going to have maybe the easy task of putting some drops in their water, maybe the difficult task of trying to get it down that beak and trying to, you know, <laughs> get your parrot not to bite you while you shove something down their throat, their medicine. Mm, lots of fun. And sometimes it's once a day, sometimes it's twice a day. You know, of course it depends. So um, that got you out easy and cheap, and that vet um, visit was over $100. And, you know, let's say 100 to 150 kind of standard, like that's inexpensive. That's not bad, right, Binks? If your vet needs to do some blood work, now we're talking over $100 for the blood work. If they need to do an x-ray, we're talking uh, almost 100, like maybe 80, 90. Um, and depending, and if they need to do chemistry, we're talking over $100 too. And again, it just sort of depends. But that blood work, um, I forget exactly, but it's like 150. I mean, you know, on the upper side, you can, I mean, I'm sure sky's the limit, but I haven't, like generally speaking, if I have a more expensive vet bill, it's three to four hundred dollars. It has been as much as like five or six, just depending on the severity of whatever's going on. So um, one problem with the sick parrot is you are most likely walking into that $70 vet exam um, and then the blood work. And depending on, of course, what comes back, what they do or don't need done, then you're, you're looking at another vet visit because there's going to be a follow-up depending on how bad and how severe it is. And, you know, if the parrot just caught a cold at the bird store or I don't know where or what, you know, my vet's like, this stuff's in the air. It's in the air. I'm like, how did, how did this happen? I try to keep so clean. I try to do such a good job. She's like, it's in the air. She, I mean, I think she keeps... Because I keep trying to figure out how I can improve things, and she keeps trying to tell me. Some of it is just, I mean, it's like common cold. Like, some of it's just in the air for us, too. And when your immune system is good and strong, you don't catch it. And when your immune system is weakened for whatever reason, maybe you were stressed or whatever, then it was just in the air. <laughs> so, um, so that's really important to be aware of because it, you know, it may be nothing, but if you're getting a sick bird, then it's probably a little more severe than that inexpensive $150 in and out. Um, and so it's important, you know, if you can't take your parrot to an avian vet, how are you gonna help them? You're, you know, it's so hard to even tell when they're sick. How are you gonna help them? How are they gonna get diagnosed? How are you gonna give them the right medicine? If, if you know, if you have any suspicion or if the parrot store, the exotic, Avian store doesn't have like a return policy. They're like, no, if you buy the bird and you walk out, it's yours. Which I can kind of understand because if you don't know how to take care of the parrot, you know, I mean, and you don't, it doesn't eat for two days, it could die. They, they will starve. The larger parrots, they need to eat. They can't go to a, about two days. That's about their max. And the smaller birds, it's about one day. So, you know, I can understand that. If someone's like, you didn't recognize that your parrot wasn't eating, your parrot starved, they died. We don't refund when you starve your bird to death. You know, like I can understand how that could get messy. And so I think you gotta kind of really look at everything. And it, it's hard because you, I'm saying you have to go kind of measure just with your eyes, how clean is the store? How well do they seem to keep, keep um, you know, care? How well do they take care of their parents? Uh, are the cages clean? Um, do they have plenty of food? Are they out playing? Are they friendly? Is the staff friendly? Like, I would look at everything. Generally speaking, um, I'm gonna say, do parrot stores have a smell, a scent? Because, you know, parrots don't have a scent. Like, reptile stores, I don't really like going into them because they, they have a scent from the reptiles. And I don't like it. Parrots, they do, they can have a, like, each bird can have a scent. What do you smell like? I don't know what you smell like. <laughs> the Amazons, for example, they have a stronger scent. They're kind of musky, but it's not a dirty smell. So if you are, ooh, I got something in my mouth. And I don't think it was a feather. If you 
walk into the pet store and it smells like dirty, that would make me really uncomfortable. It shouldn't be like that. Um, generally speaking, a avian pet store has to be licensed with the state and the state's gonna come once a year and check that out, like check them out, make sure that they're up to par. And I, I feel like some of what I understand that par to be is pretty high. They have to keep things pretty clean. So it's kind of hard to believe that you're gonna go into a bird store and it's not gonna be clean, it, it, you know, because otherwise I don't think they're gonna keep their license or stay open. But who knows, there's always exceptions. Maybe some states aren't as rigorous as they are here in Florida. You know, I, I've only really checked that out here. But so, you know, check those things out because you, you either really want to kind of go, you know what, I'm gonna do this anyway. Like for example, when I got my other golden conure, I knew there was something wrong. My daughter and I were like, oh God, this bird is just going crazy. It's, and I saw signs, I'm like, there's, there's something wrong. And I decided to get it, fully knowing that, that there was something, you know, there were issues. And knowing that it had been in there for a little while. Um, and so I'm like, God, not only has it, does it have some issues, but it's gone untreated for a little while. So like, I knew what I was getting into. And I therefore wasn't shocked at my vet bill which, uh, what was it? The first time it wasn't quite as bad. It was like three to 400. And the second time, I think we did chemistry, so it was like three to 400. And it was bad, it was really bad news. And basically I let my golden, my second golden conure have a happy ending, have medical attention, even though it was really too late. But I think it alleviated some for him and be loved. I mean, you know, it's like it got to, have its last month in love and comfort kind of thing. And it was amazing. He and Binks, they, they just, they really, they connected. I think Binks helped him actually. And thank God nothing was contagious because that's another thing. If you have other parrots at home, you have to be careful what you bring home because your whole flock could get it. And if it's something like beak and feather disease, um, that there's no cure, it's, it's just, um, I, I understand, thank God I can't speak from experience. I understand it is a, a, a just an undesirable way for a parrot to die. They kind of waste away. They used to call it wasting disease. So um, you don't want to like bring a parrot home and, and have that now be given to your other birds. So you have to be really cautious and really careful. So, um, I, I would not, I would never try to take on a sick bird if I couldn't take it to the vet. I mean, for me, I actually, no, no, I actually, um, <laughs> I, was, I was taking one bird to the vet and I said to my vet, you know, I saw a cape parrot. Do you see capes? Because if I get this parrot, I, I see some signs and I'd want to bring it to you. And she's like, yeah, you know, you can. So there, there's just no way I would do it without that. So once you, you let's say you, you're comfortable, maybe you have the avian vet, you're, you, you can quarantine, whatever your situation is, you are gonna take on the sick bird, you're ready for the financial implications, that kind of thing. The next thing you need to know and expect is that taking care of that bird is kind of like taking care of a sick person. Uh, with Orabello, I kept him close by me all the time. That was my golden conure that only lived a month. I had to give him antibiotic injections twice a day plus other medicines. So I was on top of that because I knew it was really important if he stood a chance. Um, plus, I was constantly monitoring, is he eating? Do I need to feed him? I know how to feed, you know, if I need to feed, if I need to um, force feed kind of thing. and. Force feed sort of a nasty way of saying it, but it, it kind of is what it is, right? If, if I see that Orabello is not eating, I need and I need to offer support, I can do that. And so that means I'm monitoring all the time. I'm monitoring weight, I'm monitoring um, everything, you know? I'm monitoring how Orabello is behaving. I'm monitoring um, how much she's sleeping. And so I'm not saying that I'm with him 24 seven, but it's close, like I work from home, I'm at home, so I'm watching 
all day and I keep coming back and watching. I keep coming back and checking. The fresh vegetables, are they being eaten? Uh, the pellets, have they gone down? How does he look? You know, just all the time. So it's quite a commitment. And um, unfortunately, when Orabella got through his meds, I think in some ways the meds were supporting him and, you know, and he just quickly went downhill. And um, so that was kind of the end of that. But but you can wind up having to take care of a parrot for a long time. And so I think it's, it, well, and you know, you can. I don't think it's likely. Generally, they, they just don't last that long. But during the time that they do last, it's just full time. And it's it can be very exhausting, especially when you have other things going on. You might have a job. You might have a family. You you know, whatever else you have going on, it's you have to really make sure to make the balance. Parrots, a healthy parrot takes time and dedication, right? Um, you know, more than a cat, way more than a cat. I would say a dog too, but a sick parrot, it's like, it just, it goes up double and triple for me because I'm just on top of it and it just takes a lot. So um, I hope that gives you a pretty good idea of, you know, if you're considering getting a parrot, some things to look for in case you don't want a sick parrot, if you are in a position and you want to extend and really help a parrot that needs some help, I hope that gives you a good idea of what to look for. I mean, if the parrot's got like snot basically, you know, mucus around the nose and their vents really bad, you might kind of go, how bad do I think this is? Do I think this is beyond help? Um, do I want to just bring him home and let him die in comfort kind of thing? If it's really bad, take him to the vet, see. You know, in other words, kind of assess for yourself. Do I think that this parrot's a little sick or a lot sick? Not because you know, but because you make a, a guess. And I think from there you go, okay, I think this parrot's a little sick. Maybe it'll be a lot sick, but I think I can help it. Or maybe you go, wow, I, I don't think this is going to work. I just don't think this is going to work. I once saw an Alexandrite who just, you know, I could tell he was sick and I wanted to take him. I wanted to buy him and help him out, but I just couldn't. I had babies, I, you know, my hands were just too full and I just couldn't. And um, I just, you know, the shop owner's not going to tell me, yeah, it was a sick bird and it died. You know, that's not going to happen. So I was like, oh, the Alexandrite's gone. You know, I know. I just... It, it just did not look right. The feathers weren't big, bright, and beautiful kind of thing. They were dull and faded. And the Alexandra just kind of, you know, I mean, you can kind of get a sense of the energy, get a sense of the color, get a sense of the vitality as much as you can. And so I hope this helps you so that if you do that, you kind of have an idea as to financially what you might be roping yourself into, time-wise, what your dedication, what it might call for, um, and then the payoff, because my yellow naped Amazon, frankly, I did not know that she wasn't well when I got her, but I was able to really help her. We turned her issues around. She's not cured because once you've done damage from a seed-based diet, especially for a bird like an Amazon, there's some permanent damage to bone development. The density's not there because um, the seeds inhibit the ability to absorb calcium. So the bones are weak and the seeds also added to fat and my vet was able to show me an x-ray of my parrot, Lorenza. Her veins have fat in them, her bones are weak. You know, my, my vet was kind of surprised that Lorenza's doing as well as she is. So the payoff though has been phenomenal because Lorenza is my shadow. My daughter calls her my shadow. Um, when I take a nap, Lorenza's right here. Right now we went to get the car, pick up the car because the car was getting fixed. Lorenzo was on my shoulder, I took Lorenzo with me. She's just my bird, and that payoff has been incredible. I do think that when a parent knows that you've cared for them and brought them back and really helped them, I really think they know it because I've seen it and they appreciate it and they get more bonded to you. So the payoff is incredible and the cost is pretty high as well. So I guess it's kind of like everything else in life. You know, you gamble, if you take the chance and you risk it, it might be incredible and um, it might be tragic. I've had both. I've had incredible stories and I've had tragedies. 
And I've also had parrots like Banks that I got as a baby. <laughs> He's like, Mom, it's hot out here. Yes, it is, I know, huh? And I'm bonded to him too. So I feel the most important thing is to do what is right for you and for the parrot you're getting. Because when you have that bond with the parrot, you have a best friend, maybe not for life, but maybe for decades. And I think that having the right parrot and having that bond and loving your parrot and having your parrot love you is priceless. Whether that's a rescue, a sick parrot, a baby parrot, whatever is the right beak clicking thing for you, whatever clicks for you. Thank you for joining me in this long video. I think it's a good, important video. If you, you know, I, I, I want you to know what you're looking for. I hope that helps. Um, thank you for the suggestion on this video because it's true, if you're a neophyte, you know, you could be in over your head, you just won't recognize the signs and, and that could be really hard. Or make sure you're working with a vet because they recognize the signs, they see it all the time. An avian vet. So. Until the next blissful video, I'm going to take him in because he's panting. It's Florida, it's getting hot and humid, and we're feeling it, aren't we, Binks? Thanks for joining us in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to comment below or on parrotbliss.com or, yep, or the Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and I will catch you next time.